G'day there everyone, Daniel Anderson here. Welcome to another training session uh, in the Modern Work Collective. Um, now today we're going to go back to a little bit of basics and fundamentals, uh, but I found myself uh, doing uh, this type of session uh, um, quite frequently over the last few months, and that is explaining the anatomy of a SharePoint page. And it's really good to get a, a foundational understanding of the authoring canvas in SharePoint. SharePoint um, so that you can make the most of what you can do. So especially um, when I find people are coming from, uh, dare I say, classic type of SharePoint environments, there are still some of those around where moving or migrating from classic SharePoint to modern SharePoint, or there are still people and there will continually be people coming on board to um, SharePoint for the first time, taking over certain roles, whether it be site admin or uh, content uh, authors or content production inside of an organization for a communication purpose, or it could be a HR team uh, writing um, how-to guides or frequently asked questions and things like that and publish them uh, on the intranet or through a specific team site or something like that. So having a foundational understanding of what a SharePoint page is and the different components of that is something that's really, really important. So that's what we're going to tackle today. Um, we're going to start with a blank SharePoint page and we're just going to go through the anatomy and the different components. So let's just dive in and have a look. I've, got, I've created a uh, a blank uh, communication site here and we can see this is out of the box this is what you get when you provision a brand new communication site now unless you've got a uh, provisioning process or a, a site templating type of functionality in play at your organization this is what you would get when you go create new uh, site uh, and choose a communication site template so you can see here We've got a page. Now, a, pa a SharePoint page, to create the content inside of a SharePoint page, we use these building blocks that we call web parts, okay? Now, these web parts live inside uh, different sections and different rows, all right? So, what we're gonna do here is I'm going to create a new page, and we're gonna start with a new uh, blank page. Now, out of the box, again, we've got three different templates that we can choose from. We can create our own and save our own, and they are um, uh, tied to that, only available to that site collection or that site that we save that template to. So you can see here we've got blank, we've got visual, and we've got basic text. So that gives us a starting point, all right? So what we're gonna do here, I'm going to choose the blank um, template, and we're going to create this page. Nice and quick, it creates the page and we're taken to that page and we're ready to author. Now, this the, the horizontal components or the horizontal sections, and you can see when we're in edit mode that the, the visual look and the cues of a page are a little bit different. We get a few tools, authoring tools. So you can see here these horizontal um, components of a page are what we call sections. And you can see there's a gray button on the left-hand side where we can add additional sections. So a page can be made up not of just one section, but multiple sections as we build the page. Now these pages, um, or these sections, sorry, are made up of what we call um, columns, okay? So we can have different column arrangements inside each section. So we can have multiple sections and then multiple um, uh, layouts of, of columns within those sections. Now you can see this section here is what we call a one column section, but we can have a two column and you can see it splits into two 50-50, or we could potentially have different layouts. So we've got three columns, we've got one third left, and we've got one third right. Now each one of these sections can also have uh, a background shading to it. So we can break up that page if we have multiple sections in it. Now these shadings come from the SharePoint theme that we've got. We've got different shades there. So in my case, I've got a grayish theme. I can go a light, I can go a little bit softer, and then I can go darker as well. So let's keep it uh, to this, uh, actually we'll, we'll take it back to, to, um, to white or no, no background. So you can see here that we can edit a section and we can change the layout dynamically, all right? We can also then either move a section up or down and we can see that in a minute when we uh, add a few web parts. Uh, we can duplicate the section 
or we can delete the section and then we can also add sections. So when I click this plus button, we can add different sections and build out our page. Okay, so if we now, if we move this, so we can drag the, the handles, uh, we can move this section up to the top and you can see now that I've got a single column up the top and I've got a, a two column underneath. I can continue to build. So I can say, right, let's have three columns. So I've got one, I've got two columns and now I've got three columns. So the SharePoint page and the authoring canvas is made up of sections and rows. And you can have multiple sections, we can build on top and we can stack on our sections and those sections can have different layout configurations. Now if we scroll back up to the top here, this is our header section. Now we can edit this, uh, the layout of this title area as, as we call it. We've got image and title, we've got plain, we've got color block and we've got overlap. All right, now we can also change the image of this header. So if I click this image icon, you can see I've got different options. I've got recent stock images, web search, I can upload from, or I can use out of my OneDrive, I can use from this site, I can upload or I can insert a link. So if I jump into stock images, let's just find an image here um, and we might choose this option here. All right, so we'll insert this as the header. Now you can see that this, uh, the layout configuration of the title is overlap. Image and title is a, just a little bit more blocky. We've got plain, which is no image at all. I've got color block, which is a little bit uh, more extended. And we've got different options here. We can also see that we can change the alignment of this title area. So if we leave it at overlap, we can center the title. Um, we can enter some text above this as well. Um, so what we might do here is go how to guide, for example, and you can see that this text above the title appears uh, over or overlaying the, the image there. We can show, uh, turn this on or off. So we can either show or hide that and we can show or hide the publish date as well. All right, so there's a few different options that we can do here. So um, let's give this a title, Anatomy of a SharePoint page. And it helps if I spell this correctly. Um, that's not even it here. Uh, anatomy of a SharePoint page, all right? So we've got uh, sections, columns, and now what we need to do to build out and add content to these sections and columns is use what we call web parts. And I like to, to explain these as building blocks of your, um, of your pages, all right? So that's what we use to build out our pages. Now this uh, web part that we've got here is what we call a text web part. So, and you can see when we're in edit mode, we've got the ability here to uh, hover over any part or any uh, section and uh, row, uh, sorry, column, and we can hit the plus button and we're presented with the web part toolbox. So you can see here that uh, out of the box, we've got a stack of different web parts that we can utilize as building blocks to build the content of our page. Uh, and they're, they're segmented into different categories. So we've got uh, text, media, and content. We've got documents, lists, and libraries because we can embed uh, additional or document libraries or windows uh, into our document libraries that are part of this site as well. Now we can uh, add feeds and you can see we can bring in some third party type of data here too via Twitter. We've got news, people and events. We've got data and uh, data analysis. We've got regional information. We've got advanced um, web parts here as well. So these are the building blocks and we add these to the pages uh, to, to create our content. Okay. So if we, for example, let's just, what we might do here is in this, um, the three column web part, let's just add uh, some images, all right? So we might have the need to have three images. We might just add these uh, one image and then we can add another instance of this uh, image web part here. And we can build out, we'll just insert three of the same one, like so, one more to go. Uh, stock images and we'll select, um, maybe we'll choose, let's choose this one for that one. Okay. So you can see here that we've got three columns. We've got three instances of the, the, uh, the image web part. 
Now here, we might, let's say, let's put in a highlighted content web part, all right? So we might have most recent documents. And then over on this side, we might have meet the team. So we'll add in a, actually that's not what we want, is it? So we want to go the people web part. So we wanna search for the people web part. We wanna add a title to this web part, meet the team. And then what we can do, we can insert our team members. All right, so we can add uh, all of our team members and when people come to this page, then they'll be presented uh, with the team and they, they know who uh, who is either responsible for the management of this page or involved in this particular team. Uh, so every single web part, what you'll also see is that when you select a web part, that we've got a, a toolbox here that, um, that allows us to configure that instance of the web part. So you can see this pencil icon and on the right hand side here, we've got the properties of that web part. So the configurable options, some have more, some have less. So this uh, highlighted content web part is one of the, um, is, is one that you can configure a lot um, and there's a lot of different properties in here. Now, if it's something like a text web part, then there's not a hell of a lot of configuration here, but you can see we've got a lot of formatting options for this, this text web part. If I look at this people web part, we've only really got some layout options as configurable parts here. Now, if I add another web part to the page, and if I add quick links, for example, you can see that this has its own set of properties. So quick links has different layout options uh, and two different um, uh, toggle options here. We can either show image in the layout and we can do some audience targeting around this one as well. All right. So the anatomy of a, sh just recapping a little bit here. So the anatomy of the SharePoint page, if we uh, start from the top, we've got the title area, which is configurable. Again, pencil icon, we've got layout options, we've got alignment options, and then we build out our pages and we create our pages using the building blocks. So we've got sections, which are the horizontal parts, and we can stack sections on top of each other. And then inside these sections can have different layouts. So we can have one column, two columns, three columns, one third left, one third right. We can also break up our content by providing some background shading to that section. So remembering sections are the horizontal parts. And then inside these columns, is where we add our web parts or our building blocks. And that's how we create the content and bring in the value to a SharePoint page. So there we have it. The anatomy of a SharePoint page, the authoring canvas of a SharePoint page uh, is uh, something that is nice and intuitive to use, uh, but it is really uh, important that we have an understanding and a foundational understanding of the building blocks and each, um, each component of uh, what makes up a page. So I hope that brings you some value today. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.